Drilling the rotors for the extra pins leaves a lot of metal chips inside the rotors. To get these chips out, we have to pull one of the end plugs out of the rotor and then blow out all the metal chips. The easiest way to get the plug out is to take a sharp punch, punch a hole in the plug so that we can use a hook attachment on the end of our dent puller to pull the plug out of the rotor. I use a second larger punch to enlarge the hole in the plug in the end of the rotor so I can easily get the hook attachment from my dent puller into the plug to pull it out. A couple of sharp yanks with the slide hammer is all it takes to get the first plug out of the rotor. This plug, of course, is destroyed with the large hole in it, but it's going to get replaced with the new plug that came with the double pinning kit. The easiest way to remove the second plug is with a 20 inch long piece of half inch thin wall conduit. The thin wall conduit contacts the plug out on the edge, preventing damage. This plug is going to get reused, so it's important to not ruin it when removing it from the rotor. After driving the plugs out, carefully take the rotor and bump it against the table a few times to loosen up the chips that are inside it. You'll get a pile of metal chips showing up on the table. Keep doing this until most of the big chips are already removed. To help clear out the inside of the rotor, I ended up making this little adapter for the end of my shop vac. It's just a piece of nylon that plugs into the end of the rotor and is big enough on the other side for the hose of the shop vac to go over it. I did this for two reasons. First, so that I can keep most of the metal chips off of my countertop. And second, so that I can capture a lot of the floating metal chips that are inside the rotor when I start using the blowgun. I tap the rotor with a rubber mallet several times to loosen up any chips that may still be inside the rotor. Shaking the rotor pretty vigorously helps move all of the chips towards the outlet where the shop vac is waiting to pull the chips from the inside of the rotor. The final pass is with a long blow gun reaching inside the webs of the rotors to try to get any final metal chips loosened up. The new plug for the ends of the rotors are about 0.074 too long compared to the old plugs. I took those plugs and I chucked them up into a 5C collet to go into the lathe so that I could turn the amount off the edge of the plug. To get the plug set square in the collet, I set a thick washer down on the table push the plug into the collet, and then centering the collet carefully over the washer, push the collet down so that the plug would engage squarely inside the collet. As you can see, the plug sits nice and square, so it's going to turn evenly once it goes in the lathe. After chucking up in the lathe, I took several passes off of it until that excess material, again 0 0.074, was removed from the end plug. The easiest way to safely hold the rotor is to take a piece of scrap wood and bore a one and a quarter inch diameter hole into it about two and a half inches deep. Put the rotor on top of that piece of wood with the hole and then take some Forma Gasket 3H 
gasket, gasket sealer and put it in the hole for the new plug to set. Using a 15 millimeter socket as a driving mandrel and a rubber shot filled hammer, I drive the plug in until it is about 10 thousandths below the surface of the edge of the rotor. Wipe off the excess gasket sealer. Flip the rotor over and the same process is duplicated for the other side. 